Uh, I think that a guy like me as the nominee will be able to keep the focus on Biden, keep the focus on the Democrats' failures. But then, more importantly, after you win the election, start holding these people accountable who have weaponized the legal system to go after their political enemies. And that starts with day one, firing somebody like Jack Smith. That goes to dealing with people who are violating constitutional rights at the state and local government area. Republicans have turned a blind eye to abuses of power for far too long. We need to actually do something about it. In Florida, we've actually done things. We've held people accountable and we've drained the swamp in a major way. We need that in the United States. Fear and Florida men on the campaign trail once again. I was right in the middle of a f-ing reptile zoo. And somebody was giving booze to these goddamn things. We are on the DeSantis campaign death watch. Mark Caputo is the national political reporter for the messenger.com. Are we ready to stick a fork in it yet, Mark? Or, or to paraphrase Mark Twain, our reports of uh, DeSantis' campaign's demise greatly exaggerated? I'd say it's a little bit in between. At a certain point, the question is going to be this. Is everything we're seeing on the ground in Iowa, everything we're seeing in polling, both conducted by Internet, by phone, by robocall, are all the experts who are talking to in the Iowa caucus who understand Republican politics and how the caucus works, are all of them wrong? And is DeSantis right? And therefore, DeSantis will win Iowa. If they're all right, then, yeah, I think uh, uh, DeSantis is pretty much going to be done. He's barely holding on to second in Iowa, well behind Trump. And then in New Hampshire, he's fourth or fifth, DeSantis is. So it's difficult to see how DeSantis could lose Iowa and still make a claim to even being in second place in this race. So you're telling me there's a chance. A dumb and dumber chance, yeah. There's a chance. <laughs> I but mean, not, not, not a big one. But also, does Iowa even matter at this point if he comes in yes. second? Does it? Does it? Yeah, it does. Uh, I mean, I, gotta, I have to say this in a, in a, simple, a simple way. Understand the presidential campaign, so people talk about delegates and all of these things and what you need to win to get to the convention. Presidential campaigns are essentially momentum campaigns and we've never seen a candidate who's a non-incumbent and technically yes donald trump is a non-incumbent in such a strong position in all the polling in all the states so the rational reasoning goes this way if donald trump wins in iowa where he's up by big double digits what's going to stop him from losing or better said what's to stop him from winning in new hampshire where he's up by big double digits And if that happens, what's to stop him from winning in Nevada, where he's up by big double digits? And then South Carolina, where he's up by big double digits. No one has ever won all of the early states and not been the nominee in either party in modern times. And let's say it gets down to a two-person race after South Carolina, where, again, he's up by double digits over Nikki Haley, the former governor of South Carolina. Why is she suddenly going to start to win after losing all this time? And why is Donald Trump going to start losing after winning all this time? It just doesn't add up. So bottom line, yes, Iowa matters because that's sort of the beginning of the snowball effect of Trump's like kind of cascade of wins. If indeed he wins. And right now, all the indications are that he's going to win. Well, to be fair, Trump's base believes that he is the incumbent. Uh, so there's there's that and there's that, too. Um, but my question is, is I, I mean, I, I just think that many people in this country don't know just how batshit 2024 is going to be politically in this country. I mean, people thought 2020 was nuts with the pandemic, the George Floyd uprising, with the with the presidential election that led to uh, an incumbent president of the United States denying the outcome of the election and an insurrection the, at the beginning of the following year, the second impeachment of the of the president at the beginning of uh, of 2021. But I think that 2024 could dwarf. All, all of that, and hopefully without a Knockwood, a pandemic, or a George Floyd-like incident. But, I mean, we've got potentially five trials of a former president of the United States. We've got all kinds of, of craziness here. But is that 
DeSantis's Trump card. I mean, is that what he's been waiting in the wings for? Is for this guy to wind up on a on a private jet to uh, to to Moscow or Saudi Arabia as a deposed you know a deposed uh, candidate? And and there he is, showgirl style, tossing the beads onto the staircase, like going now uh, the the understudy is going to rise here. Yeah, I think another way to phrase that is the choke on a cheeseburger hope. <laughs> that is, if you talk to some, I'm not joking, that's actually a phrase. There are some folks in DeSantis's orbit a few weeks ago, a few months ago, I should say, who were acknowledging privately that, look, doesn't look like DeSantis is going to make it, but hey, anything can happen. And then you'd say, well, what could happen? And then, then they would literally say, well, Trump could choke on a cheeseburger. So, yeah, I mean, that, that could happen. But, yeah, I might take the under on... 2024 being crazier than 2020 simply because when you just listed out 2020 we had a pandemic i mean that was really nuts i'm not saying this is going to be sane by any stretch of the imagination but maybe we're going to be less crazy but uh, uh, you know the, we are certainly in uncharted waters here we have no idea what's going to happen if donald trump actually goes to trial if he gets convicted uh, it's it's really really going to be a mess but let me ask you if trump chokes on a cheeseburger in that uh hypothetical scenario <laughs> is DeSantis the second guy <laughs> you know or no or... <laughs> not right now I mean that's the thing is is like he's barely he's barely coming in second in Iowa and again he might be in third and if he does come in third it's hard to see him staying in the race now that having been said when you start to kind of drill down into the minor Republican voters Ron DeSantis is much more in line with today's Republican voters and Republican Party than Nikki Haley is but he, in part because of uh, the way in which he's run his campaign, DeSantis has, and in part just because of the dynamics of the race, there's been the space created for Nikki Haley to sort of fill this void and be sort of this alternate brand X. Quick, Mark, what was the cause of the Civil War? Slavery. <laughs> not the role I mean, of government, not states' rights? Roy, well, Roy, was what was the, the cause of the Civil War, Roy? The states' rights to have slavery. <laughs> Oh. Exactly. I love the role of government to have slavery. I mean, this is, you know, I mean, what's really remarkable, by the way, of Nikki Haley's Civil War slip up there is like it was in New Hampshire. If you go to New Hampshire on the campaign trail or whatever, and you go in these lovely small New England towns, you'll actually see Civil War monuments and uh, statues of Civil War soldiers. But they're not Confederate soldiers. They are Union soldiers, oh. right? And so for her to come up there and that patriotic place to say oh uh you know we don't basically will you know silent on slavery uh th that just does not hunt that dog does not hunt in new hampshire at all and you saw the result dude she was the governor of south carolina the first state to secede yeah. from the union that the first domino that fell on the road to civil war and they were explicit yeah. in their secession Documents explain at, like at the very beginning. One. At the very beginning, yeah, I know. I, the S I, I word just... was right there. I mean, it was right there. She just couldn't reach up and grab it off the shelf. They're trying to forget history, Billy. You know how it is. Oh man, yeah, yeah. Um, Mark. So, last couple things. First, yeah. What does a down, defeated DeSantis returning to Florida look like? What is the revenge tour when so many Florida lawmakers, I mean, he probably perceives it, betrayed him, endorsed uh, uh, Trump early and often. Um, they've got a legislative session coming up right that's going to run concurrent to his losing, effectively, the, the Republican primary. What does this look like? Is he powerless? Is he out for blood? No. What, what, is, what is Florida? What is a Florida with the DeSantis like retribution t tour look like? I, I don't fully know that, but number one, only about what eight, nine, I think about eight uh, Florida legislators out of uh, 160 have endorsed Donald Trump. So there's not going to be that much revenge meted out on those Republicans in, in mainly in the House. Now that said, yeah, he does return DeSantis. He would return. He will return diminished politically overall. But he still has powers of office, which give him line item veto authority. That is, he, he can cross out little uh, sections of the budget and cancel hometown spending projects and lawmakers. And he can also veto their entire legislation. Legislation. He's shown uh, a willingness and, and a zeal for using his veto pen and 
has certainly communicated to people not to cross him and shown them what happens when uh, they do or when he has even perceives a slight. So he's not going to be that weakened legislatively. So the question to kind of recast is what does a DeSantis look like after he comes back home and has to sort of rebuild his brand sort of nationally through his office? I do see him uh, continuing to pick culture war fights, uh, continuing to govern as a very reactionary and powerful conservative. I would caution people against writing his obituary. The guy's 44. There's a lot of time for him to run for office again. So you were going to see. Now, the reality is, is he does get out of office in in two years, right? And there's going to be an extra two years there for him to sort of do nothing. And the question is, who's going to succeed him? And there is chatter about Casey DeSantis, his wife possibly running again, because that carries on the DeSantis name and it also sort of keeps him relevant and possibly eyeing another presidential run. I don't oh, know. That's BS. But that's no, totally, totally BS. The rise of tacky <laughs> O.